Hello everyone, and welcome to part 2 of how to make Pong in Unity. So last time we set up our play area by importing our sprites and placing them on the scene how we see, where we see fit, and creating this canvas for our text. In this episode, we're going to make our bats move up and down, and to have the ball bounce left and right between them. Let's get started. What we want to do is select our game object, add a component, which is going to be a new script. Let's name this Bat1Controller. Also, when you name scripts, you can't have spaces. So that also we're going to be programming in C sharp. And this is just going to be very simple. Move an object up and down and make it stop it at the top of the screen and the bottom of the screen. So when you create a new script and double click it, it will open it in a program known as Mono Develop. And that's where you do all your coding in Unity. So when you create a new Mono Develop or um, a new script, this is what you see. You have a start function that happens once when you start the game. Or, which means either when this scene is loaded, or when you click this uh, play button. There's also an update function, which will loop continuously as the scene is loaded and the game is running. We also have this public class. You don't need to know what classes are yet, but they will be helpful in the long run. But for the sake of this tutorial, they aren't necessary. So for our script, let's think about what we want to do. We have these two bats, and we want to, this left one to move up when we hold down the W key, move down when we hold the S key. We also want it to stop at the top and bottom of the screen because otherwise it would be kind of pointless to make it go all the way down here, especially since you can't see it. So the way we do that is by accessing the rigid body 2D component and we manipulate its velocity in the Y direction. So going into our script, we're going to need to write a few things for our code. We need a private rigid body 2D that we're going to be accessing, and let's just name it RB. Mm -hmm. And the reason we make it private is so only this script can access our rigid body component. It's just safer code that way. However, we still need to define RB. So in our start function, we're going to tell uh, tell the game that RB is this game object's component, specifically the rigid body 2D component. Now the reason now we could just use this to get to our velocity, but it's a lot easier to just define a variable and access it and just write out this instead of all this code. So now that we have defined our rigid body, we want it to move up and down at the appropriate times. So in this update function, I'm going to look for a condition using this if statement. And that condition is if our rigid, oh wait, if there is an input for a certain key on the keyboard known as the W key. And we also want to check for our if the S key is pressed, or if no key is pressed. 
and we want to have else's here and here. And what an else statement does is it basically checks if this condition is met, otherwise check if this is condition is met, otherwise do this. That's basically what this code is doing. So now we're checking conditions. Is it, are, does the player want to move up or down or not at all? So when the player moves up, we want to access our rigid body and we want to set its velocity to a new vector2 value. We want it to move 0 in the x direction, but we want it to move a positive value in the y direction. And then let's just copy and paste this here and here. When we press S, we want to go down, so let's say negative 2. And when we're not pressing anything, we just want it to be 0. So now let's go into Unity and test that. If I were to click play, press W, it moves up, but kind of slowly. Like, I want it to be a lot faster. Let's go back into our code, make it 5. And now let's see how fast it goes. Yeah, that's better. And we can tweak this as we go on. So now that we have this object moving, I want to get the other bat moving. Now this is actually pretty easy. We can use basically the same script. We just have to modify a bit. So what I did was open up this window, which is our folder for our assets. And I'm going to copy and paste bat1 controller, but rename it to bat2 controller. And the only thing I'm going to change with the code is... And as you can see, it appeared here. Wait. Okay, so there are several things we need to change with this code before it'll actually work. So, we can't have classes of the same name, or because Unity does not like that. So here, now I want up arrow and down arrow. And we can think of this bat2 controller as a second player. And remember to change the public class to bat2 controller. That should fix this error. Good. So now if I were to go into play, I'd use... Oh, that's odd. Up and down arrows aren't working wonder why that is. Okay, it's possible that you simply cannot copy and paste scripts. So instead what I'm going to do is just create a new script like normal and name this bat2 controller. Open the script and instead I am just going to copy and paste everything in bat1 controller. Is it opening? There it goes. So copy and paste everything in bat2 controller. Change the uh, keys that it's looking for to the up arrow and down arrow respectively. And now if I were to click play, it works. I can move both bats. However, I want them to stop at the tops and bottoms of the screen. There are several things I can do. I can have the transform position make it so it stops letting you move the block at those heights, or I can just put a hitbox there. So before doing that, it's best to work with a ratio for your camera view like 16 by 9 because if you were to scale it scales the uh, camera view with it whereas using resolution it doesn't keep the scale the same so in the next episode we will be getting our ball moving left and right along with finalizing how our bats move if you have any comments or questions, please let me know. Thank you for watching, and goodbye.